Hi, how are you? Today I'm going to show you how I make those little sweet fairies. Over the last few weeks I've put together a little fairy kit and all the materials are in this little box to make three little fairies just like those. So I'm going to show you how I actually make the fairies but if you don't have the fairy kit you may still have all the materials at home already. So just keep watching and see, do you need to buy anything extra or do you have everything? I'm going to put the link for this box into the description. Should you want one, you can follow the link there and purchase them through my website. They come in four different color variations. So it's on the box, but it's clearly shown on the website as well, all the different colors. <clears throat> so my name is Francisca. I'm a wet felting artist. Um, but for those little fairies now, there's actually no felting needed whatsoever. So come and join me over at my workspace and I'm going to show you exactly how I make them. So this is what, what's in this fairy making box. Three different colours of Corydale wool. And it's important that it's a roving. And because there is three fairies to make in each box, so everything comes in trees in this box. Then I have some wool here for the hair and three beads. They're 14 millimeter beads for the head. Then I have here some hearts. Now they're just additionally don't really need them. They're just for decoration purpose. Then this is for the wings. It's a tall. Some, some sparkly bits in it. Then we need cord, two and three millimeter cord. And a really, really strong thread because we need to be able to pull um, with that. So that's what's in the fairy box. So I'm just going to show you what's not in the fairy box, but that we also need to make the fairy. So we're going to need glue. I have here a glue stick and liquid glue, whatever you prefer to use. We need pencils, color pencils. And I like the ones that have the, the brush sign on it. But not to worry if you don't have those. Uh, we need a scissor. A template and just normal sewing thread. Now we don't need to do any sewing but we need some thread and that's it. So we start off with the head first with the drawing of the face and I do this with those markers here. So this bead is 14 millimeters and I'm starting off with the eyes. So just in the middle of the face, not on top or anywhere else, just right in the middle, two dots and don't have them too close together. It's nicer when they're a little bit apart. So just simply two dots. And this face is, is really easy to draw. So this is the nose now. So it's just kind of like an arch. Putting the camera into focus and then the mouth. And that's basically it. And if you use markers like me, I mean, if it doesn't work out, you can erase it. And we're just going to add some cheeks now. And I need a piece of paper. And because I have those um, brush marks on my markers, I can dilute this with water. So, but equally you can use watercolors as well. It's the same thing. But because I want the cheeks only to be faint, I'm going to dilute this now with a lot of water. 
and with this I'm going to, to um, paint the cheeks onto the face. And I just don't want them too strong of a colour and the wood helps to soak some of the pigments in as well so it will lighten a little bit more. Sometimes the paint runs a little bit but I wouldn't worry too much about it. And that's it. So we let that dry now for the moment. So next up then is the hair. So once the head is dry, we can continue with the hair. And I'm using two fingers for the length. If you want to make the hair any longer, then use three fingers. And I wrap this around my two fingers about 10 to 12 times. Then I cut the wool and I cut it again in between my finger. So you get a nice length of it. So cut in between the finger. Don't cut that you get two halves. You just want one, one length. If you cut it right through, you get two. So you just want one. So with the strong thread, we're going to knot this together in the middle. Just a very simple knot. But make it really, really tight because you don't want Fairy to lose her hair. And that's why it's so important to use a really strong thread. So if you want the hair to have all the same length, you can cut it now as I'm doing here. And that's our hair done. So now we need the head. And we're going to feed the two threads through the hole down from the top. So now I prefer to use um, the Brit stick. So, and this is how I'm going to stick that on to the head. You can use liquid glue as well, whatever other glue or even a hot glue gun, whatever works for you. Just be careful with the hot glue gun that you don't burn yourself. So now one after the other, I just lay them down and stick them to the head. So I'm going a bit fast forward because it takes a bit of what it takes a while to do this and um, I think you get to just of that to add glue and pull down the wool and stick it to the head. If you want, you can cut the front of it to give her a fringe. I don't do this here. I just glue it all down. And then when you're all done, just hold it for a minute or two so it will stick down. Now, sometimes as you keep working um, on her, the you know, the wool might become loose again. So when she's finished, you can just stick them back again. But I prefer it to, to do to do the gluing at this stage rather than when I have the wool on it. So next step is the dress. So I'm going to use the wool. And I'm deciding here to use all three colors or you can just use two colors. But I'm going to use all three colours. So 
So I'm just taking a section out of each color and you can nicely see here that it's a roving and roving wool means nothing else but that all the hair strands from the wool go the same direction. And that's why it's so nice to work with this because you can just pull it apart. So again, I'm doing this a bit faster than usual. And you can separate this as many times as you want, or you can just use the one color or two colors, whatever you decide. So I have all my colors together there now. And so that the head doesn't roll around, I'm going to push this into the scissor. And make sure the face is looking at you. And then the wool just goes into the middle. And now we make it a really tight knot over it. And because there's a lot of air in the wool, this knot is not that easy to do because it tends to just bounce back up again. So the best bet is if you put your finger on it and then actually it would be easier to ask somebody else to give you a hand and make the second knot and pull the second knot over your finger. And I'm going to call my daughter here to give me a hand because it's quite difficult to do it on your own. So she's giving me a hand here to just pull the second knot over my finger so it doesn't bounce back up again. And make sure this is really tight. And that's her dress. So the next part we need is her legs and arms. So I have here a two millimeter cord and a three millimeter cord. So the two millimeter cord is her arms and the three millimeter cord, the thicker one, is her legs. So the two millimeter cord we're going to cut at 15 centimeters. And when we have that done, we're making a knot at each end because some of them cords open up and I think it's a nice little feature with the little not at the end. Just pull it nice and tight. And sometimes if you have, if the, the ends are a little bit long, just cut them off like I did there. And then the three millimeter cord is her legs and we cut them at 20 centimeters. And we do the same thing there then, um, make a knot in each end for the same reason again, really. So the next step is to combine the two cords together. And for this, I'm making a loop each of the cords and I'm having it here in slow motion so you can see exactly how I do this. So the thicker cord goes over the thinner cord 
and then I'm fiddling a bit because my camera is a bit in the way and I can't really reach it that well. So I'm lifting the thinner cord over the thicker cord and the two knots go through the loop and I can pull. And with this, I'm able to adjust the legs. You see now, you see it's loose. I can move the legs over and back. So this way I can make sure they are the same length. And once they are, I can pull the knot a bit tighter. So this is her arms and her legs done. So the legs obviously go down and the arms go up and just where the knot is we're going to knot the thread we have there left over we knot this on it. And again make sure it's really tight. And now we can cut the thread. So here is my sewing thread. You can use any color that you want. I'm having here a light blue that goes nicely with the dress. So the two legs go into the middle. I don't want to see them. So you fold down the dress up with the arms. They're out of the way. Just, just check that you don't see the legs at the side. And then I'm going to wrap the thread around her waist to give her a bit like a bust. So simply done, just wrap the thread around it. And you can tighten this as much as you like. Just go around a couple of times. Be careful that you don't have the hair. Um, trapped into the thread or the arms and then on the back I'm making a knot. So that's her bust done. So you can leave the dress as it is or what I am doing here I am going to cut it off. You see the hair now sticking up so I'll have to glue this down again when, when I'm finished with it. But for now I'm going to cut some of the dress off. And the easiest really is if you take the legs out to the side because I don't want to cut them but I can see what length I want the dress to be. And I don't cut too much first. You can always adjust it again if you think you need some more of. But that really is optional, whatever you want to do. I like to see the legs underneath. That's why I like to cut it off. So next thing then we have to make the wings. So for that I need to make a template first. So I have a piece of paper here and I need a round object. So I have my beading box here nice and round and I need something that's in around um, six to seven centimeters. So this is six and a half. And you can make it a bit smaller or bigger. Just make sure you have enough tall for the three fairies. And mark it. And then cut it out with a scissor. So there's my template. And here's the tall. 
If you have pins, I would secure it with a pin or two. It just makes the job a little bit easier to cut it out. So you can use that template for the next fairy again. So back to the thread and I'm going to use the same color thread again. And I want to get a good length because I'm taking that thread. I'm going to quadruple this thread. So I have it double at the moment. And I'm going to um, fold it in half again. So I have four lengths in it because I want to have this a bit stronger. So I'm going to attach this just where the um, where I have the bust there where the first thread is. I'm going to put this over it and I make one knot into it. I'm just going to tie it basically. And now I'm going to fold this in the middle together. Give it a bit of a twist. Make sure you have more or less the middle. And I'm going to make another knot over the wings now. So you see now I'm giving this a fairly good pull. That's why I quadri uh, quadrupled the, the thread so it's nice and strong. And cut it off. And then adjust the wings. So basically at this stage now, Fairy is finished. But if you have bought the fairy kit box there is three hearts in the box and I'm just going to show you how I attach the hearts to it so there's a bigger heart and there's a smaller heart in it so again I'm making a loop with this thread But I forgot to put the heart on the on the arm first. And I'm gonna tie the two hands together because otherwise she's gonna lose the heart. So again I need a loop. Push the two hands through it and I can just pull the loop tight and knot it and that's that done. So she's not going to lose it. She's not going to lose the heart that way. Just tie this. And then cut off the thread. And that's it. So then with the small heart. Just go on getting it. There's a small heart in the box as well. And again, I'm going to cut some thread. And I'm going to either make, make a necklace with the small heart or you can just tie this around her waist as well. So feed the true ends through the hole in the heart there and then through the loop. And that's your necklace 
or what I'm doing here now I'm going to just show you you could just tie this around her waist but you may have something different I mean you could give her um you could make her a little envelope put an envelope into her hand or anything at all or a little flower so you can just either put it around her waist like that or make a necklace so that's up to you but this is basically the end of the tutorial I just have to glue down the hair a little bit and that's it so I hope you like the tutorial I don't think they're too difficult to make those little fairies and I really hope I see you in another time so thank you very much for watching and I see you soon. Bye.